Thank you for joining again. This is Jamal Arif and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So today we are following up on our previous video of OCIR Registry Service. And in this video, we are going to talk about how do you uh, create a repo and then uh, manage a repo using the OCI Registry Service. So before we actually go on and uh, create a repo, uh, there are a couple of prerequisites that you need to do uh, within before you start using OCIR registry service. So since we talked in the in the first video as well, OCI registry service is running on OCI and is basically integrated with the identity and access management service of OCI. So you can use the IAM policies to enforce restrict policies and strict access rights uh, for your repositories as well. And it actually follows the basic same basic principle of IAM. So as you create the policies as an IAM, uh, an OCIR registry is also a resource as uh, a resource named as repos. And then you can start creating policies based upon the repos that you have using the same principle of IAM. So for instance, uh, in the top, we see the first example of allow group ACME viewers to inspect repos in tenancy. This just allows uh, a user uh, within the group ACME viewers to only have inspect level uh, access rights on the repos within tenancy. Uh, and the second one where we are using a verb of manage, allow group ACME man managers to manage repos in tenancy. Uh, it allows you to perform any operation on the registry repos because it's giving you a complete authority. So you basically follow the same principles of IAM and uh, OCI registry is also another resource within the OCI uh, services and you use that resource within your policy infrastructure. One thing to note over here is that repos are a tenancy level resource. Uh, so that's why when you are creating a policy, you have to uh, write the policies in the root compartment of your tenancy. So I'm logging into the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure console. Uh, on the main console, you can go to the menus button and drop down to developer services to registry service. So within the registry service, uh, right now there is no uh, repositories in my registry service in the US West Phoenix region. So I can create a repository over here by clicking on create repo and provide a repository name. And when I provide the repository name, there are a couple of uh, access uh, rights that I can provide to my repo. It can be either private or make it completely public. So I'll keep it private uh, and create a repo. Once I create a repo, uh, it then uh, gives me the details of the repo that it is created. What does the access rights of the repo? Right now, there are no images within this repo because I have just created a single repo right now. Uh, and on the right, in Actions, I can either make the repo public by just click of a button, which basically means that it has now any, uh, it doesn't, there is no need of authentication to access the repo. It is completely unauthenticated. Uh, and on the other hand, I can go back and make it to private back again. And I can also delete the repository from here as well. So now let's go ahead and see that how you can access the uh, repo that I have created here via the standard Docker V2 uh, CLI. In order to push and pull images to OCIR, uh, you can use the regular Docker V2 client. Uh, the first thing is to uh, get authenticated and uh, log in into the OCIR registry service. Uh, you use the regular Docker login command, uh, but in this case, you use you want you have to have a uh, the username is in the form of tenancy you, uh, namespace uh, slash username, and then the authentication token. You can create an authentication token via API or the console, uh, and just remember to save the token for the first time because it doesn't doesn't show up again, and then use that token when you log in into the OCIR registry service. And then we will use the regular Docker commands like Docker tag to tag the image, Docker push to push the image to the OCI registry service, uh, and then pull the image using the regular Docker command as well. All right, so let's try it out. 
So first of all, let's log in into the OCIR registry. Um, I'm already logged in into the Phoenix region. And now I'll take a look at what are the images that I have in my uh, local desk in my local laptop. So I have an Nginx uh, image uh, and I want to tag this first tag this uh, Nginx image with the right tag. That would be phoenix.ocir.io slash the tenancy namespace, which is my tenancy name, Jamal Arif, uh, and then the repo name and the repo tag and the, and the image tag. Now I'll just use the regular push command of Docker to push this image to the Phoenix registry, uh, to the to my registry service, service uh, within Phoenix. So I want to create a repo in Phoenix region. So I'm pushing it to the Phoenix region. So let's do a quick uh, refresh of the uh, repos repositories in Phoenix region. And here you go. So you see that there is an Nginx uh, repo with the latest image as I tagged it using the tag command. Uh, and over here, I can also see the pull command. I can copy it from the actions tab and use it to actually download the image as well. Thank you for joining. In the next video, we will take a look how you can uh, use the image that we have saved in the OCIR registry service and use that image to launch an application within a Kubernetes cluster.